Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on demand horror movies. Each week, my co hosts, Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, Christopher G. Moore, and myself, will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing the Shutter original, Sorry About the Demon. Sorry. All right, let me go off. With <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Starting off with the one and only, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing? Oh, great. You look like you're from a found footage film. Yeah, I, was say, I don't looks know. Like he's in a found footage little, film. Little, little creepy I gotta and scary. Figure this out. <laughs> skin and rink. Oh, skin and rink. We got, we got a skin and rink here. Rock, demon, rock demon. from the hidden underground bunker. Oh, no. Demon California. stream. <laughs> also joining us tonight is award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. What's up? I thought I'd, I was going to bake you guys a cake, but I decided not to. So. <laughs> oh, I love cake. Uh, hey, rounding out the crew is the one and only <laughs> Dave Dreyer. He also likes cake. I do like cake, but not a soul cake. Stay away from the soul cake. Soul cakes. So no demon yeah. cakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What to do with that soul cake? Crab cakes? Pancakes? <laughs> what? Where are we going with this? I don't know. So you're saying you don't like no idea. So you're saying you don't like soul food. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no. He's not saying that at all. Oh. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to review Sorry About the Demon. We're going to start off giving you our first impressions. Those first impressions will be spoiler free. Then we'll dive into a discussion about the film. We'll get into some spoilers. There's a few in here, but they're mostly played for laughs. And then we will wrap things up with our score of one to five. And our favorite scene. Oh, my. Uh, let's take a look at the card, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Oink. Sorry about the demon. Available on Shutter beginning January 19, 2023. <laughs> Synopsis, a young man struggling with a broken heart learns his new place is full of restless spirits. Written and directed by Emily Higgins. Uh The cast is, includes John Michael Simpson, Jeff McQuitty, love that name, and Olivia Ducayen. I believe that's close. I'll give myself a 90 on it. All right. <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoy this review and many others we have on the site. If you would hit the like, uh, share with a friend, thumbs up, all that goodness. Yeah, do it, man. Subscribe and help us reach 5,000 subscribers because only you can do that. Yes. Yes. Jeff Moore, sir, you're up first. What was your first impression of Sorry About the Demon? First impression. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so... I kind of like the story. Uh, it was, I heard this earlier tonight in another podcast uh, that Doc was on, but um, it's too long. It did not need to be that long, I don't think. Uh, a lot of the scenes kind of could have been cut by 30%. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I don't. I, <laughs> I mean, I, I was okay with it. I was entertained, but I was I was hoping for something bigger. You know, it's okay. it's a, a little flat. I think maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Ooh, um, a little flat. But hey, mm, very interesting, as they say. All right, Christopher G. Moore. What was your first impression about Sorry about the Deep? I enjoyed it. I, I think it's. I, I think I, I always find it kind of interesting when you can you can take uh, one specific genre and mix it with horror. And so we have like the romantic comedy genre, and you mixed it with horror, you know, and you baked this sort of like cinematic cake out of it. Um, and I think, I, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I will say that the comedy is up or down in in points, but again, comedy is just as subjective as horror is, so it may not be for everybody. Uh, sometimes the main guy character annoyed me <laughs> because of his his choices um but i i did like i did like the mixing of the horror elements in it um you know because it really it 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 definitely pays homage to things like poltergeist and exorcist and all, a lot of these different things and sort of mix them all together to sort of create this this movie but uh but yeah i actually enjoyed it i mean yeah it, it i think the story is a little bit scattered in places and they're still trying to figure out things and uh, situations seem to be forced in certain parts. But that's usually how most 
slapstick comedies are in general. So it, it, I think I think once you sort of take that in consideration, um, you know, but I, I, overall, I really enjoyed it. I, I was entertained by it. Um, and I was kind of in, intrigued by how the whole thing was going to play out. And and I think he, even by the end, it gets it gets a little bit of it got a little emotional for me, you know, so. Um, but yeah, I, I, I found it to be definitely funny in parts and, and, uh, and, and also one of the situations that if you're, if your house is haunted by a demon, you have no other place to go. You just got to deal with it sometimes. And so that was just one of those funny situations that I kind of enjoyed and how just, just how some of the story played out. But yeah, I kind of like the, the mishmashing, you know, you know I me, mean? I, I'm usually, I love a good horror comedy and I think, I think, you know. This is not perfect, but it, I think it's got some really fun elements in it. Excellent. Excellent. Dave Dreher, sir. What was your first impression of Sorry About the Demon? It was all right. It was all right, he says. <laughs> it was all right. It was kind of like a, uh, it was kind of like a Hallmark movie. Uh, you know, um, if, if Hallmark made a horror movie, this is probably kind of how it would look i don't it, it just for me it didn't really work on any level it wasn't a particularly good romantic comedy it wasn't a particularly good horror movie it was but again it was all right i mean i i watched it <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fall asleep that's a good thing right you know yeah i mean but yeah i mean it was just kind of there um you know at times it looked like it was going to gel into something and then it would just kind of step away and never like fully committed to being really funny or being really scary or, or anything. So it, yeah, it just kind of exists. Just kind of exists. Ouch. I'm not sure. I don't know. I think that, um, uh, so yeah, this movie had me a little worried at first. Um, and it took me a while to get into the vibe of the film because it has a particular language if you will of, of cinematic language because it's it's playing its comedy in a very you know, i think you said slapstick kind of way but it is yeah. a romantic comedy slapstick kind of way and then the horror is is kind of wrapped around it there were times when i was having a ball with it like once the amy with two e shows up and all that nonsense that was a lot of fun mm -hmm. uh but man um they made the lead will such a sad sack that it was hard to get behind him <laughs> to root for his character at all. He was just such a, Oh man. Uh, but eventually I think about the time he, he decides he's going to stay at the house for a certain reason. I think that's when I got behind his character, you know, when he started, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it, but uh I also had a little bit of a problem with the the family at the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really they kind of rubbed me the wrong way comedically, what comedic comedy wise or comedic mm -hmm. wise. Uh, although there are some fun parts with it toward the end, but I don't know. I so I I I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it, but somebody said they were expecting more from it, and I think I was too. You know, it, there's nothing really particularly wrong with it. It just doesn't quite, all the pieces don't quite fit together, I guess is a way to put it. Well, I mean, I, I think it's shot very competently. The, the, um, the, um, the lady who directed it, she's, she's been directing hard films since she was like, a, I think she's, she, she was 12. I think she made her first feature at 12, which makes me feel old. Emily Hagen, uh, yeah. I haven't even made my first feature yet. And she, <laughs> Uh, cause I think it's called pathogen or something. I think that was the first feature, but, um, and so it's kind of cool to see her sort of grow as a filmmaker. Yeah. And I think, um, this is steeped more into like the, the goofy comedy. It feels like something Jim Carrey probably <laughs> might've starred in if this was made like in the nineties in his early career. Yeah. Uh, our two thousands. Um, but yeah, I, I, I found it to be interesting. Uh, yeah. I think that the stuff is kind of hit or miss, you know, but I think, there's moments like even I is like, I'm not sure about this family, but then there's moments like, you know, and I think that that's the thing. It's, it's such a, the, I think what, like you mentioned, once you get into the vibe of it, you realize, okay, this is not reality. These, these, these are sort of like, you know, sitcom, it's almost weird, like a sitcom. weird sitcom characters, you know? And it almost like there's a, like that TV show ghosts. Yeah. I was thinking it, the same it, thing. It, it feels kind of like that. And yeah. And it, it's kind of, but it's also not, it's definitely not, heavy 
heavily into the the horror stuff like we normally watch and stuff which i think sometimes it's fine just to see that kind of stuff as well you know um but yeah but i i still enjoyed it i still found very funny parts i, I like the sort of interactive things like there's a part where the he's watching the tv show and the, and the and the, and the ghosts talk through that you know uh or, or even when he's listening to that the the, the was it almost like a 1980s cardio audio tape i mean there's there's funny elements that kind of play out you know i mean there's stuff i was like they're being like, oh this i'm not sure if a person can actually have a job where they do customer service for a toothpaste brand that seems kind of a stretch but well, that was just set up to be a gag yeah it's up to be a gag but then it, you know it, it does play into check off the end of it yeah well definitely yeah pay attention when they say, yeah yeah pay attention that the toothpaste has too much salt in it and then you're like oh okay um, but yeah, but I think I, I agree. It's like, I think once the, you know, the other characters play into it, cause especially with his, his, his lawyer friend and you know, the Amy girl, uh, and, but the, yeah, but, but then also how they take these normal scenarios that we see and, and how their characters interact. Cause I think one, one of the ones that made me laugh is when they're doing like a seance thing and his lawyer friends, like, can you please let go of oh, leave the house or something your honor <laughs> he throws in the legal stuff which made me laugh out loud so i don't know I, I think this definitely has a it has a very sitcom feel to it this almost feels like this probably could be a sitcom even though it's a feature mm -hmm. and i will i will agree with jeff i think there's some scenarios that kind of milked out a little too long um but i think they're I think it's one of those things where it's hit or miss where it's like, ah, I'm not sure this works, but oh, okay, that works. And so it goes back and forth for me to where overall I was entertained by it and I enjoyed what was happening, but there was a few decisions story-wise and character-wise that were like, oh, I'm not sure sure about this, but I, I still enjoyed the film overall. Yeah, I think this would be a great film festival entry. If I saw this at a film festival, I would really have a good time with it. With an audience. Yeah. And it also might be one of those sort of entryway things for people who might not be normally into horror. Uh, Cause I think even, even when it's not, even when it's being so goofy, it's still kind of, I mean, it, it still kick, you know, sticks the landing when it comes to the creepy possessed people, <laughs> you know, still they kind of did that. And there's some cool moments they did with people in the background moving and stuff. It still mm -hmm. has the, the, the scary element, but there's really no, there's really not any kind of gore or anything other than just the, people like a head spinning exercise wise or necks neck sounds when they move their neck the broken neck leg right? or yeah. broken arm well, or... broken arm i guess we have that but yeah. yeah but overall there's not a lot of there's not a lot of huge there's not a lot of violence and a lot of gore so it is more about the supernatural element so it's it's very very pg um in regards to the violent violence of it but uh, you know or do i, have I to think for, really... for me it was all that I knew the guy was a sad sack much quicker than they gave me credit for. I, I, there was a lot of those scenes building up to where then I sort of got the whole personality of when there's uh, demonic manifestations going on and he's just sort of, eh, probably this, probably that. Just ignoring all because he was so wishy-washy about everything. Um, but I didn't need that much time up till then. That, yeah, that's that, the main part. That... Well, I, I think I think the biggest problem is like there's his arc just happens at the very <laughs> end, the little bit of arc that happens because he's so and you can understand it. Like I can understand why these demons don't want to possess him because he's, <laughs> he's just not, not a very confident person. He can't make a decision. And I, I, for me, that was very annoying because it's like I feel like there needs to be a little bit more movement character wise, you know, for for the long haul of the movie to work you know mm -hmm. they get to it eventually they, get they to do it. get to it but it's it's almost like <laughs> yeah. the, it's, the it's very like, end well it, well i mean makes a decision like i'm going to stay here so that nobody else will get on it so, i mean i like that choice i like that choice for the character but like you said the the growth wasn't gradual it was abrupt yeah and him just making excuses for stuff just got but I like, a bit old i liked it when he tried to leave and go stay with his friends or stay somewhere and he couldn't find any place and he had to come back and go i can't go anywhere you're stuck with me <laughs> um, and, so it had like moments like that and you know his interaction with the with the ghosts when they were trying to scare him away was you know classic kind of don knots kind of stuff 
you know. <laughs> it, it was like the ghost of Mr. Chicken a little yes, bit. Yes, yes, that's what I was thinking know? about. And I, but I, at the same time, it's like, yeah, I mean, there's moments that that has that, and just his reaction to things, because I think, to me, the funniest without giving anything away the funniest part is at the very end when he sees something weird happening and he's like he says oh, i can't remember what he's lying oh this is shit. Shit. <laughs> the way he does the way he delivers that line made me laugh at the very end <laughs> I, I like that too i like that too uh but yeah i mean we have both demons and ghosts uh so it's a win-win right so yeah uh, although I, I, <laughs> well and then i kept thinking well they don't really they don't they really don't have any kind of element of visual effects you know because evidently these these ghosts are very corporal they're very or they're very like tactile because <laughs> <They're, laughs> i think there's one part where he's wearing the shirt and he just he brushes his hair and i was like how are you, if he's a ghost <laughs> I don't that's think. right because he steals a shirt I need the yeah yeah so shirt. i was like i'm not sure what the logic here is i guess ghosts can be just as real uh but maybe i'm overthinking it uh, it worked for it worked in the context of this movie. Yeah, yeah. So, so Dave, any last comments before we wrap this up? Uh, no, not really. No, like you said, <laughs> there's really not any. Uh, there's no real special effects in this. I mean, uh, the ghosts communi communicate through cake. We, we do have that. We do have that. We haven't really touched on that. that yeah, that they leave messages on the cake. Get, get out now. Yeah, get the black goo. That's, yeah. That's... yeah, yeah. There's a black goo in the basement. <laughs> like yeah, a we had portal that. to hell. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Although yeah, I was yeah, saying, yeah. if he's if that's an old house, I kept thinking and he's got like all these cakes just left out, and all the cake batter left. The out. There's gotta be the bad roaches. roaches <laughs> all the time I'm like, you need to clean out that kitchen, dude, because I'm like, you're gonna have bugs so bad. <laughs> oh man! But what did you think of the relationship between him and his uh, the Amy with a Y? Amy with a Y. Oh, I thought she's very cute. <laughs> well, that's just me personally crushing on most people in films. No, I, I thought the relationship was kind of made sense. And and it was, for me, it was kind of annoying that he, again, the whole thing was she just wanted to know why he didn't go to that, you know, dinner with her. Um, so you could sort of see, I mean, you could definitely see there's a, there was a chemistry, although you, you know, you also can understand why she, <laughs> why she's, why did, why, why did she leave him earlier <laughs> or why is she putting up with him and being so wishy-washy, um, and having all his hobbies? Yeah. I mean, the film doesn't allow for any development of that. It just happens at the beginning of the story and then yeah. um, the breakup. So I, I, for me that well, there was a little bit of a disconnect for that. So I didn't really feel the agency of him wanting her back, you know, that it was so defining of his character. It felt like it was plot armor, not actually character development, yeah. but it, it's definitely needed for what the story does. But mm -hmm. In the end, it, it actually, it almost worked for me. So, you know, the, I, I liked how their, their story wrapped up. Yeah. So, I mean, right. and I, I did like when she turned it to a demon too. <laughs> That was entertaining. Yep, yep. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our score one to five and our favorite scene. Uh, Jeff, you're up first. Oh, I'm going to go uh, with a three. And I'm picking my favorite scene. Mm. 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 Mm, he says. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I, I guess. I, because I wanted to see it at the end, but when uh, the people that used to live in the house are driving away at the end and, and <laughs> the reveal that we get, that's that's probably my favorite. Because I I thought that's got to there's got to be it's got to happen. It's got to um, happen. So yeah, they, if they did. didn't, it would have been it would have fell so flat if they didn't do it. <laughs> Christopher G. Moore, what was your uh, score and favorite scene? Um, I would give it a 3.5. I, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, you know, and I, I love a good horror comedy. And even though the, the horror is probably the smaller part of it, at least when it comes to like gore or anything that we normally uh, look for in, in films, you don't necessarily have to have that. And I like I like a good comedy element. And I, I think, uh, you know, I think there's enough in this that's entertaining. Um, as for favorite scene, um, 
there's probably a lot of little moments I could probably point out. I'll point out something I mentioned earlier. I think I think the same when they're doing the seance when the guy's like, it's like, will you please leave <laughs> unpossess her body or something? Your honor, <laughs> like he's talking to like a judge instead of a demon. That just made me laugh. Um, so I don't know, just the the whole scenario of the the whole family and them doing that stupid little seance they did <laughs> <laughs> it was it was strange i like i i hear you i hear you dave Dreher, give us your score and favorite scene uh i think my favorite scene's gonna uh, i think christopher and i are talking about the same one i'll let you decide you tell me uh i'm gonna give it a two and a half it's like, like i said it wasn't a bad movie it's not a great movie it, it's not a bad romantic comedy but it's not a good romantic comedy it's not a bad horror movie but it's not a good horror movie it's wow. just kind wow. of there uh you know, it, yeah, it, it's competently made. I, I, it, I don't know. It just seems never really to find its identity for me. I think that's good um, way to put it. Yeah. I was going to go with the a Ouija board scene. Is that the same one you're talking about, Christopher? I it is, it but that that was just one moment of it, actually. So yeah, yeah and I thought I thought that whole scene was actually kind of good when they bring in the uh, Amy with the with two E's yes. and uh, you know and and all that. So. Uh, I'm going to take the whole scene instead of just uh, the guy saying your honor at the end of it. I thought that entire scene, the awkwardness of all of them gathered around there and, uh, and everything. I just, I, I thought that worked quite well. Yeah. The film could have used more, more Amy with two E's. Uh, yeah. yeah she, was that good. Character. she was quirky. Um, and it could have been a nice triangle if they put some effort into it but anyway i i'm gonna give it a three as well uh i i would say that if you're in the right mood this is a good watch on shutter uh you you definitely have to be in in more of a tongue in your cheek kind of mentality you, if you're wanting straight up horror you're not gonna you're not gonna dig it but um if you want some laughs and some hijinks i think uh this is this this would be a fun watch it's a good afternoon watch Kind of just hang out and watch it. Hijinks. Hijinks. I've been hijinks, man. So my favorite scene, I think I mentioned it earlier. I just, I liked it when he had to go back to the house and he said he couldn't go. And then the whole scene, there's like three or four scenes set up in a row where he was, you know, getting more and more used to the ghosts and being less scared of them. And the, I thought it was... I just like the whole idea of it and the whole and the, and the gags that followed it. Um, he was just like, Hey, what do you, what do you, we, I can't go anywhere. What do you want me to do? Stop doing it. He just would like leave the room. Okay. <laughs> <It's tough. laughs> I don't know. Uh, there you go. That's, it feels silly picking that one, but that's what I like. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I could have picked another scene, it'd probably been the scene that the, the sweet scene where he actually tells her the truth. That one moment was very that, sweet. It yeah. did work. It worked. And that's that's what I was talking about. It saves that relationship because mm -hmm. up until then, I, I wasn't really feeling it, but I think that actually made a connection. It is at the very end. So it could have used a little bit of that earlier to know, to give it agency, right? To know that it's, you know, so heartbreaking. I didn't, I never really felt the heartbreak. I it felt more like a schmuck. And by the way, this is also <laughs> produced produced by Aaron Koontz. So. Yes, it is. Yeah, so I would say check it out just to support any of the stuff he's part of. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, will, I also was going to mention the, the dinner scene when they introduce Amy, just how awkward it is. And and it was actually, dialogue was funny, and you could, the guy was embarrassed about how he was talking to like, no, this is my only friend at work. And then, <laughs> and then when they started talking about ghosts that she really got into the conversation, it was, I liked it. I'd like that's to that was, see a spinoff that, just that, for her character. I, do, I would too. Her character was. Yeah. Was just, when she was. asked for the sage and the salt. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, "Well, I was gonna, I was gonna make a cake. Make, make, I, I think he's. I'm gonna make scones. <laughs> scones I'm like, scones, dude, yeah, scones, yeah. you have a demon in your house, and the last thing you should be thinking about is cooking more stuff that you can just leave out for bugs to find. Get, get a clue. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, there you go. That's our review about. Sorry about the demon. Uh, it's playing on Shutter. Check it out and let us know in the comments down below what you think of the film. Yes, please do. <laughs> All yeah. right. Please. Dave, Jeff, Christopher, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. No problem. I think I want to bake a cake is. now. Go bake a cake. Always fun seeing you guys. <laughs> How about just cake pops? We'll do cake pops. Yeah, we'll do cake pops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's say goodnight. 
<laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>